Hello again everyone, TrekWorks here with you. Well, we're getting ready to start on part two of our uh, Project 350 build series here at the TrekWorks channel. And if you guys remember the last kit that I uh, talked about we were going to do after we finished up on the classic Enterprise was the Enterprise NX-01 from Polar Lights, and this one's in 1350 scale as well. And uh, we're going to be doing some fun things on this one. We're going to be doing some nice lighting on it, and we're going to do the nice uh, Aztec paneling on this with the A-Creation decal set. So that's going to really spruce up the model on the outside. And then I've ordered some nice aftermarket parts to do the engine lighting. We've got a nice uh, Monsters in Motion kit for the rotating Bassard effect. And then I've got a nice little board from Tenet Controls coming in, which is going to give us our nice beep 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 you know, flashing navs and strobe lights on this model to really give it some animation too. So that's going to be sweet. And uh, we're, like I said, we're going to start on that one tonight. And we're going to get going with some paint detail and things like that. Uh, and I'll talk about that more in just a minute. I wanted to mention real quick that I had a blast building the big uh, Enterprise kit from Polar Lights up there. I really, really appreciate all the nice comments you guys left on the uh, YouTube channel um, about uh, the build. It was a lot of fun, and uh, um, I hope some of the things that I found along the way will help you guys out. And uh, They're not expert modeling tips, but just little things that I found along the way that might help you with your build, make it a little faster and a little easier for you. And uh, it's great to see all the builds going on. If you guys uh, stop by the Sci-Fi Model Action uh, forums, you'll see that there's uh, quite a few build threads going on for this kit now. We've got guys doing everything from designing their own lighting for the Bussard effect to uh, right out of the box builds and everything in between, using some nice photo etch parts, making real Cadillacs out of them. So uh, it's going to be really cool. But uh, And again, I want to say uh, round two, uh, special thanks for just putting the kit out. We love these things. Uh, the Cadet Series kits are, are fine and all, but we love the large-scale Star Trek kits. And uh, if you guys make them, we'll buy them. And I hope it's a smash hit. And if you guys are watching, I hope you'll do all the uh, planning for the 350s that you can. Anything in the 350 series. Love to see a uh, Romulan Bird of Prey, a original Klingon Cruiser, Katinga. Of course, the Reliant. It would be fantastic. So, again, great model kit, and I hope it does well. I plan on building several more myself. But getting back to the NX-01, we're going to start tonight with... Um, uh, doing some light blocking on the back side of this, and we're going to also pick out a nice hull color. I'm uh, mixing up the colors, and we'll go over to the spray booth area, and I'll show you uh, how I do that and talk a little bit about the paint that I'm using. I've got a few questions asked about that and how we mix it up and how what the properties of it are, and we'll do a little uh, work to get this thing ready. So without further ado, let's head over to the spray booth and get this sucker rocking and rolling. I'll see you guys there. All right, everybody. Well, we've got everything set up here, and we've got our... Uh, black uh, primer ready to go, so it's going to get a little noisy again here. I'm going to turn on the ventilation. Got to make sure we do that. And uh, going to start hosing these down. Like I've said probably a million times in my videos, now you can see how fast that uh, primer is drying. Just with a little bit of heat. And we're doing nice light coats again. Okay, we're back here and we're done uh, priming our parts. And you can see these are all nice and dry. They, they're uh, dry as instantly as you finish touching them up with that heat gun. So what we're going to be doing now is getting set up and coming back and getting ready to do our uh, primary hull color, which I'm going to be painting on the outside of this. Uh, and what I want to do is I want to go and uh, plastic coat these. I'll do that off camera. You guys have seen me do that before. And uh, that's going to make sure our paint sticks to these really good. <clears throat> so I'll do that and I'll come back and I'll show you the, uh, the color that we're going to mix up for the hull on this. I think I've got a pretty nice color worked out for it. We'll be right back with that in just a little bit. Okay guys, well I'm getting ready to do the painting on this, uh, the external part of the hull, and like I talked about, we're going to mix up some paint. Um, I've been using this uh, Polar Lights box art for my uh, hull color reference. I, I've looked around the internet at uh, some of the different uh, builds that are out there, and um, some people are painting these kind of a bright silver, and some are more, uh, more of a dark or gunmetal gray. And I'm gonna, uh, the, the color I'm going to do on this one, the way I interpret this color a little bit, is uh, uh, kind of a pewter uh, or a brownish silver and um, you know kind of a tan type silver 
and uh, I think that's going to look really good and accent those uh, Aztec decals from uh, A Creation that I'm going to be putting on this one. So uh, let me start off here by talking about a little bit about the paint. Now I'm using some acrylic urethane, and I've mentioned in some of the uh, 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 comment section on some of my videos when I've been asked that uh, this paint is made by Spies Hecker. It's a uh, German company that makes automotive paints and uh, what, I'll, what I do is I go to my local uh, automotive paint store and I buy these in these little 8 ounce bottles here. They, they sell these by the gallon usually but uh, uh, the business that I'm in I, I do a lot of paint matching on vehicles so uh, you can basically go there and re uh, request these uh, uh, smaller size bottles and there's, there's something like a hundred and something different toners that they have to make up all the individual colors that you need to be able to match all the automotive colors that are out there but uh, there's just a few primary colors that I use uh, and uh, these are some of them. Now this is a basic metallic that I have. This one is called Brilliant Silver. Uh, it has a very fine uh, metallic grain in it so it's not going to give us any kind of metal flake look to it. It's going to look like a nice smooth silver. And then I'm using this uh, Jet Black and I've got a little bit of brown here. Now this brown is an old bottle and it's getting a little bit thick so I've already uh, put some in a little bitty cup here uh, and you can see it's not very much. I'm just going to use it to tint that down just a little bit so, uh, and then I've got to use some reducer with this too once I get it mixed. <clears throat> but what I'll be doing now is I'm going to start off by putting some silver in here. And uh, these little Dixie cups are handy for mixing this paint. Now what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to mix these uh, kind of by eye at first. And I'm just going to put a, a little bit of paint in there. And I want to make sure that I have enough paint uh, to paint the entire model and then some. Because when I come back at the end and um, do my... Uh, touch-up work on any seams or anything like that. I want to be able to uh, have some extra paint left and do touch-up work uh, for that purpose. So now as you can see we've got our nice silver <clears throat> in here now and uh, I've <clears throat> your dilu uh, dilution ratio for this paint is around four to one. So I've got about one quarter of the cup full as you can see my goal will be to have a full cup there at the end when I put my reducer in there. And uh, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little bit of black in this first uh, just a dab in each one. And I'm going to stir it with my little stir stick here because I want to see how far that's bringing that down. I want to get a little bit of a, uh, a grayish, uh, not so quite bright silver. And I hope you guys can see this in the light. And you can see that's bringing that down right away. And, and uh, putting this black in there uh, kind of uh, gives it a pewterish look already. Uh, just a straight silver and black mixed together. <clears throat> and I'll mix up both of these really good here. Okay, so I'm pretty pleased already with uh, just that amount of black bringing that down just a little bit. It's not the bright chrome looking silver now. It's a, it's almost a slight gunmetal looking gray, but, or gunmetal looking silver, I should say. So we're pretty happy with that. Now what I'm going to do is, uh, since this is so thick, I'm going to have to reduce this a little bit before I pour it in there. I'm going to go grab my reducer real quick. And we're going to put a little, a couple little drops in here. And I'll use this uh, same stick because I'm not worried about uh, getting this too contaminated. It's just going to go straight into that other stuff. So I've got to get this thin enough so I can pour it evenly in both cups. It was kind of thick, like I said. It's an old bottle. But uh, getting back to the colors now, I have some basic primary colors that I use that can, I, I can make almost anything with. Uh, you have your white, your black. Uh, yellow, red, green, blue, and then I've got a couple of shades of brown and a darker brown like you saw right here and a little bit of a lighter one that's a, kind of a yellowish tan. And then I have a few different types of silvers and with those basic paint combinations there I can use in a color wheel. Uh, if you guys are familiar with that from the old art school classes you can look at a color wheel and, and you can pick those up at a hobby store uh, or a, uh, someplace like Michael's or Hobby Lobby or somewhere like that. And you'll see that uh, the color wheel will tell you what colors to mix together to make certain primary colors. Okay, we've got a little couple little drops in there. And then you can make your own custom paints. And after a while, I've been doing this for so many years, doing it on cars, that uh, I'm pretty familiar with uh, 
uh, being able to match a color by eye and things like that and what colors go into it but after a little while of working with it you guys will pick all that up too and start being able to look at a color and say okay this is got a little bit of red a little bit of you know you'll figure it out but uh, this is a great alternative to buying hobby shop paints uh, acrylic uh, urethane is uh, very very neutral paint you can use uh, it's not reactive with lacquer it's not reactive with uh, enamel and so it's um, it's a very stable paint now I'm pretty close to the color that I like there it looks a little bit goldish so what I'm gonna do is uh, first I'm gonna take some black and put uh, a little bit more black in there because that, that will kill the color part of it and it will edge off that uh, that goldish look a little bit and then I may come back and put a little bit more silver back in there to brighten it back up a little bit and then we should have it all right so you can see here guys I've got all these uh, parts uh, set up on my uh, uh, surface here now and I've uh, cleared out the area again blown it back out and I've got all these uh, parts taped down so that they won't fly up on me and get tipped over when I'm getting paint on them that's a good way to ruin your paint job too if you're using spray pressure uh, especially the pressure that I'm getting out of this gun so we don't want those parts lifting up and uh, uh, ruining our potentially good paint job so they're ready to go I'll just uh, get my gun over here now and we'll start painting these down do all these with one shot here back up the view so you can get a wider angle on it here and here we go Okay, what I'm going to do now is go around off uh, camera here and make sure I dust around all the edges and everything and get uh, don't leave any bare spots and then we'll uh, take a look at how they look and we'll come back and then we'll go back over to the bench and see how things are shaping up. See you there. Okay, everybody. Well, I've, I've finished up uh, uh, putting my final coats of paint on these parts now. I went around the edges on all of them and I uh, made sure that they're all... Uh, covered nice and uniform and no bare edges or anything like that. I'm really pleased with how they turned out. They're going to come out just fine. And again, when a coat of clear is put on those, they're going to be really nice and smooth too. And um, let's head over to the bench over here and uh, see how our saucer turned out. Uh, you can see that uh, looking at it in the light here, it has an appearance of sort of a goldish, like a, that, that tint that I wanted. But then when you look at the light hitting it at certain angles, it looks more silver. And uh, so I think that effect is really going to look pretty with those uh, Aztec decals from A Creation paneling all over that. And um, with all the little different black highlights and little different part pieces that are in there that you paint different colors, that's really going to bring that out. And then we'll have our little gold uh, dome. I guess it's over here, the gold dome on top of the bridge and uh, the blue there at the front. That's really going to look nice. So that's going to about wrap it up for this segment of the NX-01 build. It's coming along well so far, so until I catch up with you next time, guys, take care out there, and happy modeling, y'all. I'll see you next time.